MLB Zachary D. Reimert Zachramer MLB lead writer February 15, 2019 ABE Fox, Associated Press There can only be four. Them's the rules when it comes to faces of United States presidents carved into Mount Rushmore. Likewise, it was our rule for choosing the four faces that would best represent each of Major League Baseball's 30 franchises. An undertaking as large as this required some ground rules. Players only, with respect to the dozens upon dozens of influential owners, executives, scouts and broadcasters who have left their mark, there are no baseball legends quite like baseball players. Franchise, not city, a player need not have played in an organization's current home in order to be counted among said organization's all-time greats. Statistics matter, this should probably go without saying, but the more a player produced for a given team, the better. Said his legacy, we also considered players' championships, accolades and other achievements. Good guys were also welcome, though not at the expense of important historical significance. An era, special commendations for post-integration, 1947, for post-expansion, starting in 1961, players, and virtually no commendations to the stars of the 1800s. One player, one team, a single player can't be on more than one team's Mount Rushmore. That about does it, so let's get to work carving 120 different faces into 30 different mountains. Jeff Haynes, Getty Image, Srinti Johnson, Kurt Schilling, Luis Gonzalez, Paul Goldschmidt The 2001 season has a singular place in the 21-year history of the Arizona Diamondbacks, and that's mostly thanks to Sirs Johnson, Schilling and Gonzalez. Johnson and Schilling celebrated October 2001 by going off for a 1.31 era over 89.2 combined innings. They were ultimately named co-MVPs for the 2001 World Series, though it was Gonzalez who finished off the New York Yankees with his series-winning RBI single off future unanimous Hall of Famer Mariano Rivera. Gonzalez, of course, was no one-hit wonder in eight seasons with Arizona. He was a five-time All-Star whose 224 total homers as 80 backmark, just one of many club records that he still holds. For his part, all Johnson did as 80 back was win four straight NL Cy Young Awards between 1999 and 2002. Schilling was the runner-up in 2001 and 2002, as well as the only pitcher who was even close to Johnson in wins above replacement, according to Baseball Reference. These accomplishments almost make Goldschmidt's look petty by comparison. America's first baseman did, however, make six all-star teams in eight seasons in the desert. Along the way, he became the team's all-time leader in on-base percentage, slugging percentage, ops, and war, associated press Hank Aaron, Chipper Jones, Warren Spahn, Greg Maddox anyone who demands justification for the first name here should be destroyed forthwith needs a brief history lesson. Aaron spent 21 of his 23 major league seasons with the Milwaukee, Atlanta Braves, for whom he hit 733 of his 755 total home runs. Cameron Hank also collected an NL MVP and a World Series ring in 1957, and he netted 24 of his 25 All-Star nods as a Brave. Eddie Matthews was a heck of a slugger in his own right in the 1950s and 1960s, but we've perhaps foolishly bypassed him in favor of Jones. He had had a level comparable to Matthews between 1993 and 2012, during which he claimed the 1999 NL MVP and generally served as the rock of a long-standing Braves dynasty. In a perfect world, the Braves would get a completely separate Mount Rushmore for the great pitchers that have come through the organization. We settled on Spawn and Maddox, however, because they're among the greatest left-handers and right-handers baseball has ever known. Despite losing three seasons to military service, Spawn was an all-star 17 times in 20 seasons with the Braves. Maddox pitched only 11 seasons in Atlanta, but he collected three NL Cy Young awards in that span, not to mention more war than any other National League pitcher. Uncredited, Associated Press Frank Robinson, Brooks Robinson, Jim Palmer, Cal Ripken Jr., when Frank Robinson died on February 7, Palmer honored him by telling Rock Cabaco of Mazinsports.com, he changed baseball in Baltimore. 
there's no doubt about it there really isn't. The Orioles had played in and lost one World Series between 1901 and 1965. Then came Robinson in 1966, and he ended up being the MVP of both the regular season and the Orioles' first ever World Series victory. He won another World Series with Baltimore in 1970. Many years later, Ops still rates him as the best hitter the Orioles have ever had. Palmer and Brooks Robinson played alongside him and are certainly legends in their own right. Brooks Robinson's case as arguably the best defensive third baseman ever is supported by 16 gold gloves and highlights galore. Palmer won three Cy Young Awards from atop some legendary starting rotations in the 1970s, and his name still dominates Baltimore's list of pitching record holders. By the time the Orioles won the 1983 World Series, Ripken was rising as Baltimore's next big thing. He won the first of two MVPs that year, and his future feats include breaking Lou Gehrig's record for consecutive games played. Altogether, Ripken ranks second to Honus Wagner among shortstops in career war, Michael Dwyer, Associated Preston Williams, Carly Ostremski, Pedro Martinez, David Ortiz Though they were a star-laden powerhouse in the early 1900s, the history of the Boston Red Sox might as well begin with Williams. Starting in 1939 and ending in 1960, Williams crafted a reputation as the greatest hitter who ever lived by hitting .406 in 1941 and finishing his career with the best-ever OBP and second-best-ever ops. He also clubbed 521 home runs despite serving in both World War II and the Korean War. Between 1961 and 1983, Yastrzemski took on the nigh-impossible task of filling Williams' shoes by making 18 All-Star teams, winning an MVP and the Triple Crown in 1967 and ultimately setting club records for games, hits, runs, total bases and RBI. With respect to Roger Clemens' superb pitching in the post yaz years, it's telling that the Red Sox have retired Pedro Martinez's number and not Clemens. Per his 190 era, his 1998-2004 stretch with the Red Sox is the best run for any team by any starting pitcher ever. He also had a hand in snapping the curse of the Bambino in 2004, yet no single person symbolizes the Red Sox's 21st century makeover like Ortiz. Big Poppy clubbed 483 homers with the Red Sox between 2003 and 2016, and he aided championship runs in 2004, 2007 and 2013 with a seemingly make-believe .455.576.795 batting line in 14 World Series games. Harold Phelan, Associated Press or New Banks, Ron Santos, Ryan Sandberg, Chris Bryant When your nickname is literally, Mr. Cub, you get a spot on the Chicago Cubs' Mount Rushmore. Beyond his nickname, Banks' creds include being an All-Star 14 times and an MVP twice in 19 seasons with the Cubs between 1953 and 1971. He's one of only two players to ever hit 500 home runs in a Cubs uniform, and he doesn't come with the stigma of the other one. For his part, Santo was a nine-time All-Star with the Cubs between 1960 and 1973, as well as one of the NL's very best players at his peak. Starting in 1990, he later solidified his place among Cubs fans' hearts as a broadcaster. Sandberg ranked second to Santo in career Cubs war. Most of that was compiled amid 10 straight All-Star seasons between 1984 and 1993. With respect to the eternally under-respected Billy Williams, somebody has to be the face of a 2016 Cubs team that laid a 108-year championship drought to rest. Bryant's as good a choice as anyone. He came up big in the final three games of the 16 World Series. Before that, he was the team's best player in the regular season en route to the NL MVP. It also helps that Bryant has more war through his first four seasons than any other Cub in history. Nam Weiher, Associated Press Luke Appling, Minnie Minoso, Frank Thomas, Mark Burel, Sheila Sto Jackson might be the most famous player from the earliest iterations of the Chicago White Sox, but, well, that's a can of worms that shouldn't be touched even with a 10-foot pole. As an alternative to Shoeless Joe, please consider Appling. 
He hit .310 in 20 seasons, peaking at .388 in 1936, with Chicago between 1930 and 1950, and his name is still plastered across the team's record books. Though it's harder to find Minoso in those books, he's certainly the most consequential star the White Sox have ever had. Cuba natives rise as a frequent all-star, and truly elite talent, in the 1950s helped pave the way for future stars to come out of Latin America, Mini Minoso is to Latin ballplayers what Jackie Robinson is to black ballplayers, wrote Orlando Cepeda in his biography, according to BaseballHall.org. Thomas arrived in Chicago in 1990 and went on to set franchise records with a 161 ops and 448 home runs. Though Paul Canerco had replaced him as the White Sox's top slugger by the time they won the 2005 World Series, Burel is a better fit for the face of the White Sox of the 21st century. The crafty lefty pitched a no-hitter in 2007 and a perfect game in 2009. Albeit with modest attention along the way, he also accumulated more war than any other American League hurler between 2001 and 2011, SPX, Diamond Images, Getty Image Speed Rose, Johnny Bench, Barry Larkin, Joey Voto No honest representation of the Cincinnati Reds is complete without Rose. Though Rose is stuck in a lifetime ban from baseball, good luck banning his name from Cincinnati's record books. Major League Baseball's all-time hit king is also the Reds' hit king, not to mention their franchise leader in games, runs, total bases and war. Rose was also an integral part of the Big Red Machine, clubs that won three World Series between 1970 and 1976, the most integral part, however, was certainly bench. The Og Pudge won MVPs in 70 and 72 en route to becoming the Reds' all-time home run leader and arguably the best catcher in baseball history. Right around the time Rose and Bench were fading out, Larkin was just getting started. He broke in with the Reds in 1986 and stayed with the team through 2004. He and the Reds won the 1990 World Series, and Larkin himself ultimately collected an MVP in 1995 and 12 All-Star honors. Lastly, Votto is in a spot that should arguably belong to Joe Morgan or Tony Perez. but it just wouldn't be right to deny the best pure hitter the Reds have ever had. Anyone who has a problem with that can take it up with Votto's club records for OBP and Ops, Tony DeJack, Associated Press Nap LaJoy, Bob Feller, Larry Doby, Jim Tom along before they were the Cleveland Indians, they were the Blues in 1901, the Broncos in 1902 and then Between 1903 and 1914, the Naps in honor of their mesmerizing star and fielder, every move was a picture of effortless rhythm, wrote Harry Grayson of LaJoy in the Tribune in 1943. From 1902 through 1914, LaJoy hit over .300 in all but one season on his way to club records in hits and war. A tough act to follow, to be sure, but Tris Speaker nonetheless did so between 1916 and 1926, yet it's Feller whose face belongs next to LaJoyce, even despite missing 1942-1944 for World War II, he used his legendary heater to lead MLB in strikeouts seven times between 1938 and 1948. Naturally, he's Cleveland's all-time strikeout leader. After Jackie Robinson did say in the National League, Dobie become the first African-American player to break the color barrier in the American League in 1947, he helped the Indians win the 1948 World Series, still the franchise's most recent title, and made seven straight all-star teams between 1949 and 1955. Many years later, Tommy was a steady rock in Cleveland's unrelenting offenses of the 1990s and early 2000s. He averaged 40 homers per year between 1996 and 2002 and ultimately clubbed a team record 337 as an Indian. Depp Pensinger, Getty Image Larry Walker, Todd Helton, Troy Tulowitzki, Nolan Arena Doth Colorado Rockies have scored a National League high 20,961 runs since their inaugural season in 1993. Coors Field disclaimers aside, there are some great hitters who deserve credit for that. Starting with Walker, who signed with the Rockies in 1995 and went on to post a 1.044 ops and crush 258 homers in 10 seasons with Colorado.
the MVP he won in 1997 is still the only MVP in Rockies history, and he looms as the team's all-time leader in batting average, on-base percentage and slugging percentage. Then it was Helton's turn. He peaked as an annual All-Star and the keeper of an otherworldly .349.450.643 batting line and 186 homers between 2000 and 2004. Across 17 total seasons, he set club records for hits, homers, extra base hits, total bases and war, but if Walker and Helton are the two best hitters, Tulowitzki and Aronado might be the best overall players the Rockies have ever had. Trouble with the injury bug didn't stop Tulo from hitting and fielding his way to 38.2 war between 2007 and 2014, cementing him as baseball's best shortstop. Likewise, Aronado's own thunderous offense and slick third base defense have led to more war since 2013 than all but one National League hitter. Mark Cunningham, Getty Image, Steve Cobb, All K Line, Hank Greenberg, Miguel Cabrera. Any discussion about Detroit Tigers history begins with Cobb, and any discussion about Cobb begins with what a rotten human being he supposedly was. In truth, his boogeyman reputation isn't all it's cracked up to be. What's certainly beyond reproach is what the Georgia Peach, who played in Detroit between 1905 and 1926, did on the field. He accumulated an MLB record .366 batting average, stole 897 bases, and set numerous Tigers hitting records. K-Line is the only Tiger to come even remotely close to Cobb's greatness. He was an 18-time All-Star with Detroit between 1953 and 1974. In 1968, he also did something that even Cobb never did, lead the Tigers to a World Series championship. Though K-Line's 399 homers are a Tigers record, there would be a different name atop the list if World War II hadn't interrupted Greenberg's career. He hit 331 homers in 12 seasons with Detroit, winning two World Series in the process. He still holds the Tigers franchise record for slugging percentage. It's hard to deny Justin Verlander is the greatest Tiger of the 21st century, yet Cabrera is worth it. Miggy won back-to-back -back MVPs in 2012 and 2013, the latter of which capped a four-year reign as the best hitter in baseball. Further, his 155 ops as a Tiger ranks behind only Cobb and Greenberg. Pat Sullivan, Associated Press Jeff Bagwell, Craig Biggio, Roy Oswald, Jose Altuve Though they had their moments in the 1980s, the Houston Astros didn't really build a National League powerhouse until Bagwell and Biggio rose to star him in the 1990s. Biggio set him up by collecting a team record 3,060 hits over 20 seasons with Houston. Bagwell knocked him down with 449 homers, also an Astros record, between 1991 and 2005. The two will likely rank first and second on Houston's war leaderboard for many years to come. Pitching-wise, the Astros have notably employed both Roger Clemens and Nolan Ryan, who are arguably the two most dominant right-handers in baseball history. But whatever you do, don't underestimate Oswalt's career. Oswalt had a better nine-year run with Houston between 2001 and 2009 than even Ryan did between 1980 and 1988. For that matter, he accrued more war during that stretch than any other National League pitcher. Certainly, he deserved a lot more attention than what he got. Despite the efforts of past greats, it wasn't until 2017 that the Astros finally won a World Series championship. There's no better face for that club than Altuve, who was the MVP of the All That Year. His status as one of the best players in the American League, period, is ongoing. Rich Filling, Getty Image C. George Brett, Brett Saber Hagen, Kevin Apier, Alex Gordon officially, the Kansas City Royals were born in 1969. Unofficially, they came to life when Brett debuted in 1973, Brett stayed in Kansas City all the way through 1993. He played in seven postseasons, including with a World Series champion in 1985. 
Among his personal accomplishments are a .390 batting average in L MVP in 1980, plus 13 All-Star selections and near total ownership of the Royals' offensive records. As aces go, Saber Hagen and Apier ensured that there was at least one in Kansas City's rotation every year from 1985 through 1997. Saber Hagen won the All Cy Young Award in 85 and 89, and ultimately compiled more war between 85 and 91 than every all pitcher except for Clemens. Albeit to less fanfare, Apier pulled off the same feat between 90 and 97. Of course, the 1990s and 2000s were dark times for the Royals. But reanimation in the 2010s coincided with Gordon's rise as a top five war producer in the L between 2011 and 2014. After coming 90 feet away from a crucial run in the 2014 World Series, he more than made up for it with a home run that plotted a course to victory for the Royals in the 2015 World Series. Victor D. Colin Gunn, Getty Images Jim Pagosi, Nolan Ryan, Tim Salmon, Mike Trout Not long after the Los Angeles Angels came into being in 1961, Fregosi became their first big star. As a shortstop who could hit, run and field his position, Fregosi accumulated more war between 1963 and 1970 than every all-player save for Yastrzemski. He later managed the Angels to the American League Championship Series in 1979, perhaps the best thing Fregosi ever did for the Angels, however, was serve as the centerpiece for a 1971 trade that brought back a young righty named Nolan Ryan, he racked up 2,416 of his record 5,714 strikeouts as an Angel, as well as four of his seven no-hitters. Despite somehow never earning a single All-Star nod, Salmon racked up a club record 299 homers in 14 seasons with the Angels between 1992 and 2006. Along with Garrett Anderson and Troy Gloss, he was also a cornerstone piece for the 2002 club that claimed the franchise's first World Series title. Yet the best player in Angels history is on the team right now. Since 2012, Trout has won two AL MVPs and made seven All-Star teams. He also boasts more career war than any other Angel, not to mention any player in history through the age of 26, Transcendental Graphics, Getty Images Jackie Robinson, Duke Snyder, Sandy Koufax, Clayton Kershaw a proper MT. Rushmore for the Los Angeles Dodgers would include the most consequential executive branch Ricky and the most beloved broadcaster, Ben Scully, in baseball history. As players go, Robinson naturally comes first, beyond being the first African-American player to cross the color barrier in 1947, he was also a whirlwind of athleticism and sheer resolve who wrecked up 61.4 war in only 10 seasons, he bore the burden of a pioneer and the weight made him more strong, Roger Kahn of Jackie Robinson in the Boys of Summer. If one can be certain of anything in baseball, it is that we shall not look upon his like again. Robinson also played a part in delivering the 1955 World Series title that finally freed the Brooklyn Dodgers from their damn bumps label. Yet Snyder's four homers certainly had a bigger impact in taking down the Yankees. His other credits include eight All-Star selections and a club record 389 homers. The Hofax's stardom was relatively short-lived, his six-year run, which netted three NL Cy Young Awards between 1961 and 1966 puts even Kershaw's best six-year stretch to shame. That's not counting the three rings won by Kofax in 1959, 1963 and 1965, it's Kershaw, however, who leads all Dodgers pitchers in war. He also owns a 159 career era that ranks ahead of Koufax and oh, every other pitcher who's ever logged as many as 2,000 innings. Alan Diaz, Associated Press Gary Sheffield, Josh Beckett, Giancarlo Stanton, Jose Fernandez The Miami Marlins World Series winning teams of 1997 and 2003 were so eclectic that it's hard to pinpoint a single face for either of them. Sheffield will do for the 97 Marlins. In six seasons, he gifted the Marlins with a club record 156 ups, 122 home runs and a huge performance, 5 RBI and a clutch catch. In Game 3 of the 97 World Series, Beckett was frequently injured between 2001 and 2005, but he was certainly healthy when the Marlins needed him in October 2003. 
he mustered a 2.11 era in six appearances, culminating in a shutout in Game 6 of the World Series that clinched Miami's second title in seven seasons. Seven years later in 2010, Stanton arrived and got to work slamming a team record 267 homers in eight seasons. He also became the team's first ever MVP on his way out the door in 2017, which brings us at last to the late great Fernandez. The young fireballer only made 76 starts for the Marlins before tragically dying in a boating accident in September 2016. His pitching nonetheless had him on a path to all-time greatness, and his insistence on having fun at everything he did made it impossible not to have fun watching him. Indeed, there is no more perfect candidate for the first retired number in Marlins history. Ron Vasily, Getty Image Throbinyant, Paul Molitor, Cecil Cooper, Ryan Bront, no. Three pick in the MLB draft has been a 4-2 it is one for the Milwaukee Brewers. He landed them Yount in 1973 and Molitor in 1977, Yount went on to become one of the best players of the 1980s, accumulating 55.3 total war and winning LMVP awards in 82 and 89, across 20 total seasons with Milwaukee, he set club records in too many offensive categories to count. Molitor debuted in 1978 and stayed in Milwaukee through 1992. He made five all-star teams in that span and mixed 160 home runs with a .303 batting average and team record 412 stolen bases. Cooper's Brewers stardom was relatively short-lived but he peaked with four all-star nods in five seasons between 1979 and 1983. The 143 ops he tallied in that stretch isn't the only lasting testament to his hitting prowess. He is one of the two or three best hitters I've ever seen, Hall of Famer Don Sutton said of Cooper in 1983. Despite his performance-enhancing drug scandals, Braun is nonetheless one of the most significant players to ever play in Milwaukee. He's hit a team record 322 home runs, and counting, and he's starred on three of only five teams the Brewers have ever sent to the postseason. Jim Mohn, Associated Press Walter Johnson, Harmon Killebrew, Rod Carew, Kirby Puckett Long before they were the Minnesota Twins, they were the Washington Senators. And Johnson was their ace. Oh, was he an ace? Between 1907 and 1927, Johnson won MVPs in 13 and 24 and accumulated more war than any pitcher in history. His chief weapon was a fastball that put even the best pure hitter of the era at a loss for words, just speed, raw speed, blinding speed, too much speed, Ty Cobb said of Johnson's heater, per BaseballHall.org. Calabrew was just coming into his stardom when the Senators moved to Minneapolis in 1961. He played all but one of his 22 seasons with the franchise and set club records with 559 home runs. He was also a 13-time All-Star and the LMVP in 1969. Caruso Twins' career lasted from 1967 through 1978, a span in which he collected all seven of his batting titles, 12 All-Star nods and a 77 LMVP. The total collapse of Puckett's beloved public persona in the early 2000s can't be ignored. But neither can his place in Twins history. He was one of the Al's great stars for a decade between 1986 and 1995, as well as a fundamental part of World Series winners in 1987 and 1991. Bill Kistroon, Associated Press Dom Seaver, Daryl Strawberry, Mike Piazza.